want to come back to the question of creativity, which we started with. And, and Charles, you've done some really remarkable studies by putting jazz musicians inside your fMRI machines. How you do that, I don't know. Uh, yeah, how, how, how does someone play in, in one of those machines? It's slightly awkward. Um, <laughs> I mean, so uh, for those of you that have been in a regular MRI, a functional MRI is not really any different ergonomically, meaning it's a really tight space. It kind of feels like a coffin in a way. Um, you're, you're lying down on your back. You've got two mirrors that are enabling you to see your hands the right side up. So mirror, mirror, pointing down at a piano keyboard that is about this long that sits on your lap and your legs are propped up. Then you've got electrostatic headphones so you can hear the output. So the, the piano sends a uh, digital signal out to the, a computer that's outside that then sends a piano note back to your headphones that corresponds to the note that you played. It's not an acoustic instrument. And it actually works pretty well. I mean, I've been in there for hours myself just trying to get this thing to work. <laughs> and um, you can just kind of play. And so, yeah, it, it's, it's doable. So yes. one of the things you've been studying is what happens in the brain when, particularly when jazz musicians improvise. Right. And I know you've studied both when they do it solo and also mm -hmm. when they've been playing with other musicians. What have so you found? I'm looking at several different spontaneous improvisation conditions, including visual artists drawing mm -hmm. to, and to understand, and rappers rapping, try to understand what happens in these moments of spontaneous improvisation. It's Suffice to say, it's really complicated, but the one defining trait I think that is always present in some form or another is some degree of prefrontal inhibition. Mm. Okay. I've seen this over and over again that there's big portions or important portions of the prefrontal cortex that are relatively turning off during this improvisation behavior. And you know, this again I think speaks to, this, to Vijay's comment that it's the way we're conceiving of thought. Okay, that doesn't mean that you're turning your brain off. Mm. It means that you are putting certain processes that are normally at the forefront into the, for, into the background. What, what, what are you uh, trying to shut so down? So for example, though? conscious self-monitoring, okay? Effortful processing, um, let's just say, paying enormous attention to the detail of what you are doing and concerns that you want to make sure that your response is correct or appropriate. So you've got to shut down that critical voice that might prevent you from Definitely. doing something new. That, that's sort of the kind of qualitative musical explanation that you, in order to generate a new idea or to play something with abandon, you have to have a certain lack of concern about whether you're right, hmm. okay, whether you're correct, whether it sounds good. I mean, you have to be true, I think, to this, some sort of, I mean, I think this is what makes a great jazz musician great, is that they can do that.